In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to a job cost system. First question, job cost sheets include A, direct materials, direct labor, finished goods, B, direct materials, estimated overhead, selling costs, C, direct labor, actual overhead, administrative costs, D, direct materials, direct labor, estimated overhead, E, direct materials, direct labor, cost of goods sold. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna use the process of elimination, see if we can if we can cancel some of these out here. So job cost sheets include. Now, as we do this, we can, we, this is one of those questions that have a lot in common. We can try to use the process of elimination here between the choices if we had no idea which one to, to look at. Now, as we see this in a job cost system, we should think that we're talking about uh, making inventory and the three things involved are support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it are going to be direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So as we go through this, we probably have an idea. That's what we should have an idea of. That's what I would expect to see. So the first one says direct materials, direct labor, and finished goods. And um, finished goods doesn't doesn't seem right, right? That's what, you know, once the job is complete, it is finished goods. That's not what's on the job sheet. So we're kind of missing, I'm saying, okay, well, we're missing overhead on that one. So I don't think that's gonna be it. Second one says direct materials, estimated overhead, and selling costs. Now, this one looks good. I'm not sure on this one with the estimate. I know overhead possibly would be there, you know, selling costs. However, I'm pretty confident are not on the job cost sheet because those are period costs, not part of the cost of production, which is what the job cost sheet is tracking. So I don't think it's B. C says direct labor, actual overhead and administrative costs. So now we, we see these two kinds of overhead, actual and estimated. But again, I can eliminate this one, not based on that, but based on the fact that it's administrative costs, which are period costs, not part of production, not therefore on the job cost sheet. So it's not C. D says direct materials, direct labor, and estimated overhead. So again, if, I, if maybe I don't have an idea of what this estimated overhead is, but that looks pretty good because those, those are the three that I would expect to see. So then the, then the last one, E says direct materials, direct labor, cost of goods sold and uh, that one is uh, we wouldn't think it's cost of goods sold because that's what's going to happen once we finally sell it so again that's that's not on the job cost sheet we use the job cost sheet to determine cost of goods sold once it is sold so it's actually e and and i was kind of thinking they would have one one that would be direct materials direct labor and actual overhead and if they were to do that uh, just recognize that we it would be the estimated overhead here that we were looking for because um, when we applied to the job cost sheet we didn't know what actual overhead was we used an estimate to do so so if there was a question between d and another one that was all the same except this was actual overhead just note that the job cost sheets will be using an estimate not the actual overhead that's the point of overhead we don't know what the actual cost should be applied to the job that's why we have to use an estimate that's why we have to use overhead in general. Okay, so final answer, job cost sheets include D, direct material, direct labor, and estimated overhead. Next question, a source document to request materials for production, A, job cost sheet, B, purchase order, C, materials requisition, D, materials summons, E, new job notification let's go through this again using the process of elimination 
A source document to request materials for production is either a, a job cost sheet. Now we might think, well, that's what we're working on. So maybe it is a job cost sheet. I'll keep that for now because you know, that's the main things we're working with here with the job costing system. B, a purchase order. Um, and, and again, we might think, well, the, the materials is the first step and we might need a purchase order for that. I'll keep that for, for now. C says a materials requisition. And again, materials requisition, it's if we're requesting materials, that sounds kind of reasonable. I'll keep that for now. D says a materials summons. And um, I'm not sure that sounds funny to me. A summon summons is like <laughs> if they're summoning someone that quite sounds kind of serious type of terminology for requesting materials. I don't think that doesn't sound right to me. I think that's a made up thing. So and then E says new job notification, new job notification. And that might be the reason for us requesting materials, but I don't think we request materials with a new job notification. We got notified, we got a new job and therefore are, are requesting it. So I don't think it's E. So if we go through this again, then we're gonna say a source document to request materials for production is either A, uh, job cost sheet, B, purchase order, or C, materials requisition. Now of those three, I don't think it's A because A is gonna include all of everything on it. It's gonna include materials, labor, and overhead. That's where we track it. So it's not going to be the requesting document or form purchase order or materials requisition. Now of the two, the purchase order is the one that we use to request from the vendor. So, so when we, when we are buying the materials from the vendor, we may use a purchase order to request the materials that they will then ship. But when we're getting the materials to the, from the warehouse to the production, to the factory, then that's the one we're going to use a materials requisition form. So we're going to request with the requisition form materials. So C is going to be the answer. Final answer, a source document to request materials for production is C, materials requisition. Next question, journal entry to record payroll costs for labor in the factory. A. Payroll expense is debited and work in process inventory is credited. B, work in process inventory and factory overhead are debited and payroll payable is credited. C, cost of goods sold is debited and payroll payable is credited. D, direct labor and indirect labor are debited and payroll payable is credited. Or E, work in process inventory is debited and overhead is credited. Okay, let's go through this again, see if we can use the process of elimination. Journal entry to record payroll costs for labor in the factory is either A, so we got a payroll journal entry for people that work in the factory. So A is payroll expense is debited and work in process is credited. Now we might think that sounds reasonable if we're, if we're paying payroll that's normally the payroll journal entry. We're not talking about withholdings. They, they didn't put anything in here with social security and Medicare and payroll taxes. But if we eliminate all those, that's usually what we think of as payroll, debit expense, which is a payroll expense credit uh, work in process. Uh, so, or, or we would credit cash, you would think. So the second part, work in process seems kind of unusual. The debit to payroll seems like the norm. So let's go to the next one. So we're gonna say, we'll keep that one for now. B says work in process inventory and factory overhead are debited and payroll payable is credited. Now, you know, this might seem reasonable in some ways because we're going to put it in work in process is, is where we want to apply the wages somehow because we want to put it into work in process and inventory account. And then we're going to credit wages payable, which may be instead of crediting cash because we haven't paid it yet possibly. So I'm going to keep B for now. And then C says, Cost of goods sold is debited and payroll payable is credited. Uh, that doesn't seem reasonable really because cost of goods sold is where we would expense the inventory at the end. We haven't sold it yet. So clearly if it's gonna be an expense, you would think it'd be payroll, not cost of goods sold at this point. So I don't think it's C. D says direct labor and indirect labor are debited and payroll payable is credited. Now that actually sounds kind of reasonable here because again, it says direct, that's what we have here. You would, you would think, I mean, if we were paying payroll, it would be direct labor and indirect labor. 
So I'll keep that for now. And then E says work in process inventory is debited and overhead is credited. And um, in, in this case, work in process, it might you might think, well, something should go to work in process and something, something should go to overhead. But you would think they would both be going the same direction because they, you know, we're, we're increasing them both and they're both inventory accounts. So it doesn't really make sense that one would be debited and credited. So I don't think it's E. So let's go through this again. We've got A, D, A, B, and D. So journal entry to record payroll costs for labor in the factory. So first one says payroll expense is debited and work in process inventory is credited. Now this one, the, the payroll makes it sound kind of kind of uh, like it's possible. And the fact that we have work in process uh, is part of inventory sounds kind of plausible. But if this was the journal entry, when are they going to get paid? How are we going to pay them? There's no cash being credited and there's no payable. So it would never be a payable. Plus the work in process is um, is going down or is a credit and it's an asset account. So we should be debiting the work in process and payroll expense is actually wrong because we're not going to be expensing it. Even though we're processing payroll, we're going to be putting it into an asset. We're not consuming it to help us generate revenue. So that's why it's not a and then we're left with B and D. B says work in process inventory and factory overhead are debited and payroll payable is credited, which is similar to D, which is saying that direct labor and indirect labor are debited and payroll payable is credited. Now of those two, B is actually the correct one because D is, is really telling us why we do B. Meaning, in other words, D is saying direct labor and indirect labor uh are, are the types of of wages we could be paying meaning we're either paying people who are working directly on a job or people who are working indirectly and if they're working directly on a job we determine that so that we can debit work in process if they're not working directly on a job we determine that so that we will have to then debit factory overhead so so these are the determining factors these aren't actual accounts these are just telling us which account we should be uh, hitting based on the fact that we can apply these to a job and these we can't. So the correct answer is actually B, final answer. Journal entry to record payroll costs for labor in the factory. B, work in process inventory and factory overhead are debited and payroll payable is credited.